Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Metabots Rakushos post game. In the last part we started off the parts and rally as well as found our first part, and now we're gonna go around Metaropolis and see what parts we can find around here. Now one of the hints we found in the meta shop is Rosewood Private's beauty. Obviously, that's Karen. We already know she's not home, she's somewhere at the school, so let's head on into Rosewood. Hello there, children. You weren't here before. We, the members of Karen's fan club, are currently in the middle of our big Find Karen campaign. Oh, that sparkling badge. Are you part of the campaign, too? Yes. The rules are simple. You have to find Karen somewhere in Rosewood Private. Let's begin. Wow, that's a really sweet meta watch. Where'd you get that? Uh, you know, that I think about it, they never do explain where the Phantom Renegade slash Henry got our meta watch from. Which, I guess it could be assumed to be Dr. Aki, but... Hmm. Either way, uh... The really tedious part about finding Karen is that you have to go around and basically talk to everyone. Also, look, it's Kalua. You might remember her. She was the little girl who became a Robo Robo that we helped out back when uh, the whole Robo Robo children incident happened. I'm not exactly sure what triggers what you have to do next, but uh, this is going to be a lot of back and forth. You also just get to see how many dicks there are in this school, like, Oh, you're a poor kid, you shouldn't be here, blah. Something I always found interesting, actually, thinking about the anime again, even though I haven't talked about that in a while, is that, uh, it, as far as I can remember at least, uh, Rosewood only showed up once, maybe twice in the entire anime. And what I always remember about that is, I, I forget if it was their introductory episode or not, but Karen was shown to have an invincible winning streak uh, in the anime because... People didn't want to defeat her because she was apparently, like, too cute to really beat up well or something. I forget the exact, uh, exactnesses of it, but it was something silly like that. Either way, this room has a few things of note for us. If you have a photo of Karen, you can sell those Karen's fan club guys for a good price. Keep that in mind for later. Once I find Karen, I'm gonna get those meta parts. I believe this is the kid you need to talk to in order to progress events around here. After this, if I beat my other rivals, I can find Karen. Uh, you can actually progress with the next person in this little dialogue chain. Because you do need to do things in a set order around here. Either way, let's talk to this kid. Karen's really cute. Ah, th th that's a picture of Karen! Please, sell it to me! I beg of you, please sell me it! I'll even pay five bucks! Eh, ah, sure. You lost the photo of Karen, but we gained five bucks, even though I think at this point I'm already maxed out on money at just under a thousand. Yeah, I, I, that was a waste of five bucks. Uh, that is worth doing, though, because you might remember, when we first came to Rosewood, we got that picture of Karen for one, so we just sold it for a profit of four bucks. It doesn't influence the cat in, uh, <clears throat> mail quest in any way, though. Admittedly, this is where not playing through the post-game since I first played the game kind of bites me, because I could have just progressed this quest a lot more quickly, but, eh, it doesn't really matter too much. Although, thinking about it, uh, when I was a kid, I don't think I actually technically completed the post-game. I think I got towards the end and realized I screwed up and can't get the last medal. So, I just didn't bother going after the actual super boss at the end of it. Though, this does make me wonder about how post-game was handled in the other Metarot games, you know? I have no way of knowing myself, obviously, even though I believe there is now a fan translation for the first Metarot game. Because, uh, well, we obviously never got the sequels. Isn't that right, Delta Arts and Rocket Company? I do think if they actually, like, try to get one of them out there here, it would do well enough, though. Karen? I saw her going to the music room on the first floor. She doesn't say that unless you talk to that boy who I battled earlier, I believe. But let's go into here first, the principal's room. Hey, principal. I hope that the school sees more metafighters like you. Let's check where he was held earlier. The art of not being caught. It's just a little late to read this now. <laughs> That's humorous. I like little nods like that. Either way, we need to head down to the music room, which is down here on the first floor's bottom right corner. And now we need to talk to the girl in the middle. If you like Metabots that much, then you should roll battle till you die. I believe I actually end up showing this battle. Shirley Bear and uh, I forget the name of the other one. It doesn't really matter, because we've already seen that we've seen this battle before, this is just, uh, so we can actually get some gameplay of the battles early in. At this point, uh, battles like this should pose no trouble to you, because due to your, uh, levels and probably much better meta parts, there is nothing that can really stand in your way. The only real battle I can see being annoying in this area at this point still is probably the Starpedo one here in Rakusho, uh, mostly because... 
see parts and counterattack and all that jazz. Though I do like the kind of double-edged sword effect the game has going on, where early game battles can still give you some trouble later on, especially after they like, get mana forces. However, at the same time, you can do mass amounts of damage to early game enemies still, and take down like three mana parts at a time, and it just feels so good. Also, I should mention, uh, even though it's not going to be as noticeable because of how many fights we're going to end up be editing out or speeding up in this uh, post-game due to repeat fights, I am still doing the thing with the battle theme where I switch it every few parts, uh, just to keep it interesting on my end, mostly. You know, I I'll be honest, I'm still trying to remember this mermaid metabot's name because it's bothering me that I didn't remember- Oceana! That's it! There we go! Ah, glad I remember that right as she died. <laughs> Honestly, I could have edited this out, but I just didn't want it to be, like, too short of a part. Because I want to make uh, as many of these post-game videos around 20 to 25 minutes as I can, if not a little longer than that. Because honestly, this is a fairly short post-game with stuff edited out. <laughs> anyway, let's see what she has, to, she has to say. I like them that much, too. Eh? Karen? I saw her in the second room, uh, second floor classroom. Well, gee, that's descriptive. We have to go in here. Uh, this is where they were talking about nano machines earlier and such. Let's talk to this kid. Looking for someone? Bro battling is more important than that. And hey, look, more Kintaro and Dr. Bok choice. I figured I'd lose. Karen? I saw her in the hallway below. Good lord, so much back and forth. You know, at least it's fairly minor back and forth instead of going like across all Metropolis. Also, I recommend saving right now. Why? We're coming up on a fairly familiar fight that I don't like. Though, at least with my current setup, it'll be easier. Oh, Hachiro! Hey, buddy. Oh, Hachiro! Have you seen Karen? If you can beat me in a Metrin a row battle, I'll tell you. Yeah, we get to fight Hachiro's Stingray and Double Armor Paradine team again. I actually edited my Chameleon Metabot off screen in order to have the uh, monkey part back, the uh, Keen, because Can't Defend is still going to be very useful in this fight. Counterattack is actually extraordinarily useful as well due to the fact that in the case that the Stingray attacks uh, my Knight Metabot, which I think, I forget who he actually has the aim preference for, uh, that's a lot of damage going right back at him. Uh, one thing I forget if I mentioned about, uh, eh. One thing I, I forget if I mentioned or not about counterattack is that more often than not, it'll do enough damage to destroy the part that you were attacked with. I think it's supposed to always, but, yeah, I've had times where I swear it doesn't. Based on the fact that it's using laser, I do believe that it always aims for, aims for the closest metabot, so that means it's really good for my knight. Either way, time to speed this fight up. Speed up theme for this part is the last Persona 5 song I'm probably going to be using for a bit, and it's my favorite song in the game, Life Will Change Instrumental. I love this track. Uh, really though, the Hichiro fights, we've seen these a lot by now. You know how they work. Uh, can't defend on the armor paradines just to make this fight go a lot faster. Uh, otherwise, just physically attack as much as you can. If you have aim shot attacks that uh, you see aiming towards the Stingray, go for those. And otherwise, just try and win. Uh, if you still don't have a full set of Stingray parts, go for that, because obviously you can buy the Arma Paradine parts in the meta shop now. And that's about the end of it. Wait, did I just see that right? It's Stingray? I could have sworn it was Stingray. That may have been a typo. By the way, Hichiro, tell us where Karen is. Just by looking at you, I knew you were strong. Never mind that. Where's Karen? Karen? Eh, I don't know. Why you? But now that I think about it, I saw her on the second floor. Okay, I gotcha. Well, if you'll excuse me. God, you little sh- Either way, moving back onto the second floor. The second floor again. We actually need to head into, I believe, the classroom on the far left. Because this girl down here is studying. Ah, uh, just stop talking to me. I have a test to study for. And she's once again a Charlie Baron Oceana team. Karen? I know where she is. It's okay to say, right? If you're looking for her, she's in the classroom next door. Finally, we know where she is. At least, but mind you, they've all said they knew where she was, but we never actually got a full answer. Also, I recommend saving once again. 
because we're coming up on another kind of boss fight. Oh, Koji. Hey, buddy. You don't know where Karen is. I heard she was here a moment ago. I heard the same, but I don't see her unless she's hiding in a plant. Which means we faced another dead end. Great. Uh, let's just get out of here. Oh, hi. Ah, oh, it's Karen. Iki. Wait, she won't be giving them to you. Yeah, Koji's technically the boss of this little side quest area. However, his team is back to the war bandit and rock flower once I'm just editing out. I haven't begun the fight yet, Koji. Okay, okay, I'll accept my defeat. Here you go, Iki. Take care of it, okay? And we get the head part of Bazelga. I will win in the end. Keep trying, buddy. <laughs> Koji will never change. Karen? Why do you have meta parts for the parts in Rally? Somebody asked me to hold them. It's more fun than actually participating. Speaking of fun, I just saw Salty. He looked really lonely, so you should spend more time with him. <laughs> You're right. I will. Iki, when the rally is over, let's do... Huh? Uh, just ignore what I said. Good luck, Iki. I believe that dialogue only shows up if you're doing the question mark metal quest instead of the cat metal quest. Either way, now I want to head back towards the lower left screen of Metaropolis, because we want to head down here. The parts on rally is in progress now. Say the password. <laughs> password? It's just a joke. Go right in. As you might remember, the other hint for something in Metaropolis was the former Rubber Robo Gathering Ground. However, we need to actually use per uh, the periscope here. And that's a shortcut I entirely forgot about until post-game. Uh, if you highlight a part of a specific line and press the start button, uh, it'll switch that metabot to all of those parts. Uh, only if they're all free, though. If they're not all free, it'll just skip right over to the next metabot. Because what start technically does is go all down a, uh, the line of completed sets you have. So, like, it'll become Rakusho, then the next, next full metabot, then the next one, so on and so forth. But we can finally get these two chests that we've, seen, that we've been seeing since, like, the halfway point of the game. And it's mostly Joe Rat parts, which, yeah, that's interesting. Let us row battle. Guess who's back? Select three. No thanks. Uh, the interesting thing about this room is that there are uh, select core people all around, but you can actually just completely skip them and go to the last battle in this room th through use of the periscope. But, you know, that's cool. You can't use the same strategy in over and over. I have been and will, sir. Move on to the final obstacle. Ah, the Rubber Robo theme takes me back. This is it. Same fight. You can make it to the experiment room and get the meta parts. Now, something I want to apologize here for is, I think I kind of screwed up on something back when I was first here, way back when. I said there was money in this room with boxes that you could get. I think how- uh, but however, in going back here, it's not here. I think you technically had to come in here when you first could, and actually find it first before you can actually come here and get it later. So that's on me, but mind you, I'm maxed out on money anyway, so it might just be like you have to have a certain amount of money in your inventory to begin with. That's disappointing, but oh well, I'm maxed out on money as it is. Money is not an issue in this game and post game because uh, you uh, you can get you get way more than enough uh, repeat parts if you do every fight you can. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody else took the meta parts. What? Who? Who? It was a group of three kids. Those guys again. It looks like they've gone to the meeting place. I'll go have a look. And the meeting place, if you don't remember, is the place that's under the manhole cover that uh, led to us en entering the Coding Kingdom, actually, our first time around. Ah, memories. One thing I do recommend, by the way, here in post-game is save a lot, because there are a good amount of what are technically considered boss battles directly in a row. And uh, that's no good if you're not prepared. Oh, the manhole isn't locked. Now I can just move the lift without having to do it. Okay, let's do it. Oh boy. So like I said, we've taken the place of the Rubber Ogre Gang and are creating our Neo Kids Kingdom. That's why I told you to listen to me. Just what do you think you're doing? What do we think we're... All you ever do is interfere with us. Is there something you have against me and my gang? That's my line. Bend your parts on Rally Meta Parts and roll battle me. I'll teach you not to be cheeky. And now I have to do, like, five fights in a row. First off against a Kitaro and Bok Choi's. Ah, I lost, Mama! Uh, next, I think, is against three Starpettas. Next one, go! 
Yep, three star pettas. And now for the actual interesting fights. Don't use people like that. Fine, have it your way. Try this on for size. I'm gonna hang you out to dry. Ah, back to the clothes lines, eh, Sloan? We have to fight all three of the screws in order once again. Uh, their fights have not changed since I think we first fought them in, uh, Metaropolis. But it's also a good opportunity to get their leader's parts. Uh, I should mention, uh, once we finish post-game, there is a way to get infinite amounts of their parts. So don't stress out too much about not getting them, you know? I'll go more over that in the f actual finale. Uh, in terms of stuff I recommend bringing in for these battles, though, stay away from the anti-sea parts and such, because it's just not worth bringing along. Uh, sea legs, also stay away from because obviously, and they have anti-sea attacks themselves. Uh, a lot of the post-game, I actually just find myself sticking with two-legged parts, because I have a good, uh, rate of success with them, as well as just good evasion and movement speeds. Like, I think at the moment, uh, Rakusho has, uh, the Zorin head and legs because it, it's just nice to feel an upgrade, finally. Partnered with the usual arms I've had on him since, like, the two-thirds point of the original game, I think. A and it's actually, uh, pretty interesting. I, I ended up doing something I actually hadn't done before in my previous playthroughs this time around. Uh, I'm actually using some Robo-Emperor parts on my Chameleon Metabot because, honestly, the Robo-Emperor parts are really good. God, I love counterattack. And hey, repeat parts. Yay. Every day laundry. Keep going, boys. And now it's time for Spike. Let's do it. Once again, Spike is using his Cyan Dog with two Manta Prey party. Nothing too bad. The Manta Prey is basically just there to be meat shield more than anything for the Cyan Dog. I could recommend, as usual, bringing the Shot Trap ability along with you just so you can take more direct damage to Cyan Dog. But otherwise, nothing's really changed. Also, uh, get used to seeing Cybar. Uh, because Cybar you end up seeing a lot in the post game. Mind you, I think it's just the field you end up seeing the most, in at least non-random battles, due to things like the Metal Link and, uh, last areas and such. Something you should actually fear a little bit in post-game is critical hits, because obviously they're omnipresent throughout the game, and honestly this game has a pretty ridiculous critical hit rate on both sides. But I seem to remember having the most painful ones here in post-game, just due to some of the more powerful metabots being most of your fights, obviously. But otherwise, just go all out, especially against Cyan Dog, and you should have no real issue. I am kind of surprised that Cyan Dog is lasting this long, but oh well. Also, one thing I should mention, uh, you can use the Parts on Rally parts in your Metabots, and they are really good parts, uh, particularly the Mega Emperor and Bazelgas, but there are better things you want to do, honestly, with them. And hey, Linear Cannon, that sounds awesome. And one left to go. As I said before... Okay, okay. I know you really want to play with me, right? And time for Samantha once again. Her party, as well as unchanged from the past few times we fought her, Pepper Cat into Red Laces. Uh, Shot-type attacks are not a thing you really want to use much in this fight, aside from maybe the first round, just through their Shot Trap ability. But otherwise, going all out is, is pretty good. Uh, grapple Trap's pretty good here, too. Uh, just so you can end up doing some extra damage to Pepper Cat, but otherwise, nothing's really different here. Which, honestly, as a sentence, describes most of the post-game, because uh, a lot of games, post-games, have you exploring maybe a new area or two. This game does that as well, but you're only exploring one new area that we'll see in, like, the second to last part. So, uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Honestly, now that I think about it, uh, getting this entire piece of the Parts and Rally done is basically just a boss rush, but there's nothing really boss fighty in it anymore because we fought a lot of these people multiple times, so we know how to deal with them by now. Uh, the only thing is, it might, uh, in case you're someone who doesn't have a general strategy like I do thanks to my pretty decent setup here, uh, you might have to prepare different teams in advance to deal with each of the screws. But you know, that is something I actually really like about this game. You can have multiple team setups within your nine metabots that you can just customize between uh, for your setups. 
I never take advantage of that myself because I generally just like to use the same uh, three metals, but it's there. And hey, new Pepper Cat parts. That hasn't, has, that hasn't happened in a while. Okay, so hand over the meta parts. Oh, so sorry, but they're not here. Why not? We just had a fight with Koji and lost him. You should have said that first. I'm tired of this whole queen game. I want to get out of here. Okay, bye. The boss! You're the one who first talked about the kingdom thingy! And Sloane is silent as usual. <sighs> They're as disorganized as ever. Off to Koji to get those meta parts! You end up fighting Koji a lot in these uh, parts and rally pieces as well. Mind you, it's like he's the closest thing to a rival Iki really has. Which, um, they actually do play up, admittedly. I found you, Koji! Bet the meta parts you took from the screws and row battle me. Bring it on. Just what I was hoping for. I give him way too deep a voice, and hey look, it's the Rockflower team again, editing this out once again, because we're used to this by now. Huh. Just what I expected from you, Iki. However, next time I won't lose. Oh yeah, by the way, I had to, something I wanted to ask you. Your dog is salty, right? Do you take him for walks? You gotta take care of your dog as much as you do, Metabot. You know, you guys are really pushing me talking to my dog. Fine, I'll go talk to him eventually. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. And in part, technically, 33, tech, uh, post-game part 3, either way, we're going to be heading on over to Riverview City now that we're done with Metaropolis' parts on rally pieces and seeing what we can find over there. See you guys then.